audience in the country. This is Real Science Radio. I'm Fred Williams. And I'm Ryan Williams, creation speaker and software engineer. Well, first off, Ryan, Happy New Year to you. Happy New Year to you, too. It's always good to be back. So Ryan is sitting in for my usual co-host, Doug McBurney, because last year, the RSR production team had this idea that we should do a man-on-the-street interview. And lo and behold, we did that, Ryan. We went to the Cherry Creek Mall uh, during the Christmas season about two weeks ago. And, hey, we had a man-on-the-street interview. It was really interesting. Yeah, that was a lot of fun. Actually, truth be told, went a lot better than I expected. Yeah, I went into that thing thinking, almost trying to talk myself out of it. You know, like, oh, let's do this next week. Or, you know, just trying to come up with excuses in my head. And you and I were both kind of like, ah, let's go for it. Let's give it a shot. Mm -hmm. And honestly, Ryan, um, I really thought that you did much. You, You were the interviewer, and I was the cameraman. And, you know, you really did a really good job. I thought it, it went better than I expected. So, Well, thanks, uh, thanks. Yeah. It, was, it was really enjoyable. It was really enjoyable. We were, we were kind of Moses mode for a little bit, trying to, trying to not do it and think of ways out of it. <laughs> yeah. But it ended, up, it ended up being really good and I think really worthwhile. Yeah, good point on the, yeah, the Moses. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm slow of speech and whatever. You know, yeah, yeah. We tried to come up with in our heads. But Ryan, hey, I wanted to ask, uh, what do you think of the new digs here? We've got a new studio for the Real Science Radio team. Oh, yeah, it's cool. The new studio is great. Yep. Cool to have at least my first show in here. Yeah. So anyways, we're going to have one more show in the uh, the main studio. We've got a little bit more work to do here. And that show next week, by the way, is with the former atheist Kurt Rushlow. So uh, you, you'll want to tune in for that. And then we'll have a little bit more work here, and then we'll be pretty much permanently in the studio unless we have like many multiple guests like we've had in the past at one time and then we might use the bigger studio so ryan one of the things that we're really uh, pushing this year is to try to improve our youtube presence and in fact this month is telethon month for bob inyart live the dominic inyart show and then of course real science radio all un- under the same umbrella of bob inyart live so our goal is twenty five thousand. so We need your support to stay on the air and actually to reach more people with our YouTube podcast. I know we still have a great number of listeners on audio. We'll always be there, uh, you know, on Spotify or whatever mechanism you use to listen to the podcast or on KLTT AM 670 on the radio every Friday at 3 p.m. So, Ryan, I know you've been a fan of us, including or starting a video podcast um, on, you know, on YouTube. Mm-hmm. Yeah, audio, audio and radio are great, but the there's a lot of popularity that you can gain from just having a video, having having YouTube, or even like short clips that people are really starting to like these days. So it's just a good it's a good medium to get into as well as the um, radio and audio space as well. Yeah, yeah. So Dom pretty much told me the same thing last summer, and we're like, okay, I know I've always you know had the perfect face for radio (laughs) so i kind of had to go out on a limb (laughs) so anyways we did realize that that was the move so you know we're going to move forward with uh and really start trying to build our youtube audience and so that means we've got people that are helping out to do video editing and different things to help move the both of our shows forward the dominic enyart show which i really recommend you check out He's doing a fantastic job. And then with Real Science Radio, we're going to start trying again to reach more uh, through YouTube. Yeah, that perfect face for radio is going to have to gonna have to make a transition, but I think it'll be really good. <laughs> well, don't forget you inherited that face, you know, part of your face from me. I, I think, you know, you probably got the better end of the deal from your mom, but, you know, that's, <laughs> and that's good. That's a good thing. So, so, Ryan, I digress, but before we dive into our Man on the Street interviews, which I can't wait to get into those, I think the audience will love those, we have this new segment, The Interesting Fact of the Week. And so, Ryan, what is the biggest desert in the world? The Sahara, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> no, nope, not the Sahara. It's not the is Sahara. It, um, is it a trick question? Is it... It's not. It's not a trick question. Okay, so it's not like Anarchy or something. Bingo. Like that. that is it. Yeah. Hey. Yeah. <laughs> well, your second best guess was pre- your second guess was pretty good. So, okay, Ryan, let's get on with our very first man on the street interview. And it turns out 
this guy has a certain view on the flat earth. Roll the tape. Do you think the earth is flat or round? Uh, <laughs> oh, man. Uh, flat. Flat. You're flat. Okay. Yeah, okay. So uh, well, why do you think that? Why do you think that? Well, I think there's so many uh, discussions about it being like, you know, like if you think about it, if you look out the ocean, you know, and you're like trying to see over that little peak and it just keeps getting flatter. So there's that. Um, you know, I was uh, raised to think it was round just because you see the earth globe when you're in class and stuff like that. So, uh, yeah, I don't know. For today, we'll say it's flat. Okay, for today, for today. I like, I respect the open mind. I respect the open mind. So one other question for you. How old do you think dinosaurs are? Like, how long ago do you think they went extinct? Let's see, uh... I think we're at 150 million, billion, something like that. Okay, so what would you what would you say if I told you that uh, they've found like in dinosaur like you know fossils and whatnot like soft tissue and even DNA in those remains, you know stuff that has a hard time lasting like 50 or 100 years, let alone 150 million. Interesting. And and how recent was that? Um, that was probably in the last like 10 years or so. They've made these discoveries. Okay. Maybe like 15 or 20. Okay. So, so meaning that, if that's the case, so then you were saying dinosaurs would have been around about 100, 200 years ago. Maybe not 100, 200, but maybe in the orders of thousands as opposed to millions. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay. Interesting. Yeah, I never mm. knew that. Yeah. Something to consider. Something to consider. Right. Cool. Well, thanks for your time. That's all we, that's all we needed. That's great. Hey, you're you're, you're our first customer. You're our right. first customer. We got, we got a mug for you if you want one, too. Sure, yeah. I'm all right. All right, that, that was pretty fun. Our very first interview, he was a cool guy, fun to talk to, and felt like it went pretty well. He seemed at least open-minded. He's flat earther, so hopefully. Yeah, right, yeah right out of the gate, <laughs> we have a flat earther. So was he funny. was a nice guy, though. He mentioned that he had his own podcast. Mm -hmm. and uh, mm -hmm. He was the first guy that was willing to do a man on the street. You know, We weren't sure how that was going to go with asking people, and I'd say maybe a third uh, forty percent of the people, almost half, would agree to do it. Actually. Yeah, I was I was surprised how many people actually said yes, especially given it was Christmas time. Everybody's doing their Christmas shopping, but yeah, kind of kind of cool how many people actually wanted to do it. Yeah, exactly. So this next one is kind of short and sweet, but it's it's obviously a Bronco fan, and we'll roll the tape on this one. Do you think the Earth is round or flat? Oh, that's round. Right, good answer. Good answer. All right. Um, so if I was to ask you, you know, how many years ago dinosaurs went extinct, what would your answer be? Uh, a couple hundred thousand years ago, a million years ago, something like that, yeah. Okay, what if I, what if I was to tell you that um, they've made discoveries finding in dinosaur, like, you know, remains, like fossil deposits, like soft tissue and DNA for, like, inside dinosaur bones? Would that, would that kind of change your mind on how old you think they are? Uh, maybe, yeah. Maybe? Bit, yeah. Okay. Well, um, we do a podcast kind of talking about the science behind all this stuff. And if you'd be interested, we can give you the name of it, give you a card, give you a mug. And uh, we just kind of talk about this science stuff because we believe that, you know, the account in the Bible in Genesis where God created the earth is yes. um, real and true. And we kind of talk about the science that supports it. So it's not just, you know, something written in a book. We talk about how it actually is true and it can be, you know, there is evidence supporting it. If you'd be interested... Good right now, okay, no problem. Hey, nice to meet you, Luis. Yes, as you can tell there, where our operation wasn't completely foolproof, as yeah. we got the thumb all over this, all over the screen, and then, and then. Yeah, it was I, only our second one. Yeah, just second yeah, one. So, you know, come on. Yeah. Learning experience. The camera experience. Man a break. I've, I've got a few, I've got a few of my own, I guess, bloopers that we'll see later, like where I don't keep forgetting to give the mic to people, but. <laughs> I forgot about that, yeah. yeah. So this guy was pretty cool, but, you know, he wasn't really interested in hearing more. But, you know, he wasn't a flat earther. And yeah. And he at least sound, at least said that he, you know, maybe later on as the day went on, he was thinking about that because he said that it could potentially change his mind to hear some of the evidence. So yeah. not a total, not a total loss. So this next one was one of my favorites. And Ryan actually asked kind of a personal question, which really was interesting. So let's uh, take a look at that one. Good to meet you guys. So, um, first question, nice and simple. Do you think the Earth is round or flat? Uh, the Earth is round. Yeah, definitely round. Yeah. Good answer. Yeah. Good answer. Yeah. So we're starting off on a good note. Okay. Second question: What's your password? password. <laughs> yeah, I'm just I'm oh. just messing around. Yeah, okay. okay, 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 okay. Real, real question: um, How long ago do you think that dinosaurs went extinct? 
Oh, it's something like 450 million years ago? 450 million? 500 million. Yeah, 500 you million. So what if I was to tell you that there's been some discoveries recently in the last 20 years or so where they found in like the fossil deposits, soft tissue and DNA of these dinosaurs that have died. Would that change your mind on how old or how long ago you think that they all went extinct? I mean, not really, because they're doing that down in Dallas with the woolly mammoths, aren't they? That's in like Dallas with the woolly mammoths? They're bringing woolly mammoths back to life. Oh, yeah, yeah, sorry. I'm pretty sure they're bringing back woolly mammoths to life because they got some, like, soft DNA and down in New No, uh, he's saying that, Dallas. um, I think he's asking if there was evidence to possibly conclude that they were, that dinosaurs' tissue was still, like, soft in the fossils, but that changed your mind that they were, uh, in fact, here sooner than later. Oh, okay. Later. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, okay. would say, I would say, yeah, I mean, yeah. I think science is always changing, and yeah. I'm always open to, if there's solid evidence or data to back up something, I would believe it, yeah. yeah. Cool, cool. Yeah, and um, to your point, I think they do have some, you know, I do think, do think they found some soft tissue of yeah. woolly mammoths, too, so... Yeah. Um, I guess, final question. Are you guys looking for diamonds today at all? No. Looking no. for diamonds. <laughs> all right. No. Sorry, sorry to put you on the spot like that. No, but um, I guess, do you know that diamonds have a lot of what's called carbon-14 in them? Have you ever heard of that yes. compound? Yes. Do you know what the half-life is of that, that compound? 500,000 years or 250,000 years. Sorry, I got I'm, I'm bad at this. 250,000 years? Okay, okay. Do you have, have any idea? I have no idea. It's actually just, I believe, around 5,000 only. So, 5,700. Okay. So, for diamonds that are really, you know, in theory, hundreds of thousands or millions of years old, there shouldn't be any carbon-14 left in them, but there is. So the reason we're asking these questions is because we do a podcast that's on Spotify and YouTube where we talk about, because we believe that the Earth was created by God in the Genesis account. And we do, we talk about the science that can back that up as opposed to just being something in a book that so we talk about that if you guys would be interested in um, oh, some information yeah. about it yeah. learn a little bit more cool yeah. we can give you a mug too for participating oh, yeah for sure, awesome yeah. Love that. No, cool I'm, I'm really glad that you, that you did that because I was I was raised um, Christian yeah and um, I'm a scientist actually so okay um, yeah it's just been something that I've had a struggle with my whole life with like science and, and uh, faith and yeah I think the more that we look into that that's definitely a part of believing um, mm -hmm. kind of being able to back it up with science yeah. I think that's awesome yeah because it can be hard when you when you, you know, grow up believing something, but then you, in school or wherever you are, you hear everything that is basically the exact opposite. Yeah, and then it's hard to figure out. So that's what we try to do. We try to look at just different scientific stuff that can support that viewpoint. Yeah. And just so it's not just, you know, that there actually is stuff behind it. Yeah, yeah exactly. That's awesome. Cool. Well, really appreciate your guys' yeah, time. Yeah. It was Kaylee and Chris, right? Yes. Great again. to meet you guys. Ryan. Ryan. What's yeah. yeah. It's called Real Science Radio. Yeah, Ryan, that was actually one of my favorite clips. And uh, it was kind of interesting. You put her on the spot. You put them on the spot with the question about, are you, are you ring shopping? <laughs> oh, yeah, that was fun. That was fun. I was this close to getting their password, too. Just you know, need, need, need a little bit more. <laughs> I forgot about you doing that. So Yeah, that one, that one was great. It was really cool to, they were cool to talk to. She had mentioned that she had grown up a Christian, but... You know, she got older, only most likely only hearing one side. She said, she kind of said it got hard for her. So it sounded like it was great for her to be able to hear their side. She sounded like she really appreciated that. Yeah. She appreciated just getting more information on the other side, kind of stuff that can validate what she had believed growing up. And that's and, what Real Science Radio is. One of the mm -hmm. biggest things we're out to do is not to help just the, you know, reach the unbelievers, but also believers who are kind of questioning their faith. So, and if you want to help out, again, it's Telethon Month. We're trying to raise $25,000 to help us. Mostly, most of this is going to go towards trying to grow our YouTube and video podcast audience because that is such a huge field to tap into. Mm -hmm. so. mm -hmm. Especially especially for, you know, young people like like them, because that's a lot of that's a lot of times where young people watch and listen is on YouTube or on even just short clips that you know, post on Instagram or whatever. So um, yep. It's a great spot to get into again, but I guess yep. on to the next video. We had this really, really nice family, and they were they were a lot of fun to talk to. So yeah, they we were. Can... So yeah, Native American family, and uh, boy, yeah, this was a really good one. I'm Ryan. Nice to meet you guys. Nice to meet you. Yeah. Ryan, nice to meet you. 
So my first question is, do you guys think the Earth is flat or round? Round as a pancake. Round as a pancake. Round. Wow. So, so a little uh, rivalry going on here. Yeah, I've been thinking both. Some, mm. some okay. things yeah. say it's flat and then some say it's round. So. Okay, well, I guess if it say it is flat, well, why do you think it would be the case? Like, why would that make sense to you? Mm. It just feels flat, but it's, it's more or less round. You know, the circumference is 25,000 miles in diameter. So, in order to experience the curvature, you have to do like 26 miles out, mm -hmm. then you don't feel it, but it starts to happen. Yeah, yeah exactly. So you sound like you're more in the round camp after all. Yeah. But, <laughs> all right, so um, the next question is, if how about long ago do you think the dinosaurs went extinct? Um, 66 million years ago, yes. or so they, they say. From yeah, con concurrence, from yeah, yeah. So just from history, and I like history, so yeah. they say when the uh, asteroid the size of uh, Mount Everest hit off the Yucatan Peninsula, the Chickaloop Crater, that mm -hmm. made the dinosaurs go extinct. Yeah, so I like history a lot too. I guess what would you think if I was to tell you that they've found in some like fossil deposits soft tissue and even DNA? inside of dinosaur bones would that change would that change your mind or at least open up yeah, your some, because some different possibility there are certain things that you don't know but there are certain things that they tell you that they want you to believe uh-huh you know? yeah. so you know i'm i'm up for you know all of these facts that that exist like that with the soft tissue and all of that in, in their bones you know that that's kind of cool though that's astonishing if 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 that is around, you know, you know, if they found evidence of, of that, of DNA and things like that, yeah. Mm -hmm. It really is astonishing. It really is astonishing. We can give you some information after this, but one more, one more question. Um, how similar do you think that humans and chimpanzees are, like percentage-wise? Probably around 60%. 60? 60%? Quite a bit of similarities, you know, how, I guess, uh, evolution is and how it evolves. So I wouldn't say we're, you know, Matt, Matt's first cousin, and we're not too far away from how we're related where we are to him, you know? <laughs> yeah. I don't think so, we're related. Yeah, you, you, you don't think we're related? No. Do you want to elaborate a little bit on why? Um, I just feel that there's not enough genes that they have, that we have. There are some similarities, but I don't think we're that related to them. Because that's what I was going to bring up is in the, when it comes to the, like Y chromosome, for example, they've sequenced the whole thing for chimps and humans. Yeah. And the Y chromosome is really like robust in terms of not changing over time. Well, even though we're related by fact, you know, in case that in case we are, um, we just evolve. We are a lot, you know, advanced as far as our evolution. We we walk on two feet just right. Um, we got the best features, you know. Yeah. <laughs> I agree. I agree. Um, so they've actually found that humans and chimps, at least on the Y chromosome, are like 30% different, which, to your point, wouldn't be enough shared genes to be a close ancestor. But the reason we're asking these questions is because we do a podcast and like video on YouTube and Spotify where we where we talk about some of these like scientific things because we believe that the uh, account in the Bible in Genesis where God created the earth in six, you know, 24 hour days is, we believe that's true. Yeah. And we do a podcast talking about some of the science of, that supports that claim of that being true. So science that supports the earth being, for example, we believe the earth is 6,000 years old and the dinosaurs, the dinosaurs went extinct for the most part during the global flood in Genesis. And we do, we talk about the various evidence that supports, that supports that idea. And so it's not just a, so it's not just something that you read, you read in a book and then you think, oh, that's just a religious thing. But there's actual, there is actual like evidence that we have that does support this idea too. Interesting. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. We've got a couple, we got some information we can give you guys. We got a mug that we can give you for, for participating if you're interested. And if you're interested in learning more, because a lot of it's just really interesting, too. 
cool, cool. Well, he's, he's got some QR codes over there that we can, he's just like snap a picture of it if you want to look at it. Oh, Fred, nice to meet you. Yes, nice to meet you too. <laughs> nice to meet Hi, you. Fred. I'm Robbie. Robbie? The Mitchells. Mitchell. Yeah. How old are you? Uh, 13. 13. I'm sorry, I'm sure like in the end school, like there's, you can get, like learn a lot of this stuff. So, you know, there's a chance that, if, you know, if you tune into this ever, you kind of get the, just the different side, a different angle to how the, because both, we have all the same evidence, you know, and we're just looking at the same evidence. So then it's just how, how you view, how you approach the evidence. So then there's different approaches. So you can learn different things from what each group says about the, about the evidence that we have. Because we got to look back in history. We got, you know, we not, none of us saw it happen. So we got to look at what we have now and then. Yeah, another good one there. That was, that was really cool to talk to. The, uh, the dad sounded like he was going to go flat earth at first, but then then he could only be devil's advocate for yeah, so long. He, he was a smart guy. He knew he was the circumference of the earth. I mean, mm-hmm. this guy really knew his stuff. Oh, yeah. And his his wife was, you know, she had a lot of wisdom. Mm-hmm. You know, she mm-hmm. uh, did. Like when we asked the chimpanzee question and she said she didn't think they were related, I thought that was cool to hear because most of the people we interviewed were on the millions of years side. I think that, if I remember right, she was the only one who oh, really point. wasn't yeah. on that side from the get-go, which was, so it's kind of cool to hear that from her. Also cool that that guy, when we gave him the info about the soft tissue and the DNA and these dinosaur bones, he called it astonishing. Yeah, that was cool. Yeah, he called it astonishing. You know, and that's what it is. I mm-hmm. mean, a lot of people don't know about this. It's just amazing. Of all the people we interviewed, nobody really had heard of, you know, really the biggest discovery in paleontology in the last hundred years, at least, if not ever. So mm-hmm. pretty- oh, yeah. Yeah, pretty cool stuff. So this next video, Ryan, I remember that it was three young ladies, and this was an interesting clip also. Mm-hmm. Roll the tape. Nice to meet you guys. So just asking a couple questions. Won't take too much of your time, but the first one is, do you guys think the earth is round or flat? Round. It's round. round. Good answer. Good answer. So we're, start, we're starting off good. We're starting off good. I think that's now seven to one for team round. So, <laughs> yeah. Okay. You'd be surprised. You'd be surprised. <laughs> Yeah, we, we do have one, but um, so second question is, how about how long ago do you think dinosaurs went extinct? A couple million years. Yeah, I, mean, I should know this, but years. I don't remember. <laughs> yeah. Millions. So what if um would it change? Would it make you not change your mind necessarily, but would it make you think about it a little bit more if? I told you that they've, in the last 10, 20 years, they found like soft tissue and DNA in some dinosaur bones that they've recovered from fossil deposits. Would that make you at least think about it a little bit more and maybe think about the answer? I think it has to do with like the de- decaying and like the earth, like where they died too. Cause I feel like, especially with the earth, um, it depends on what kind of materials too. Cause like, if it's rich in nutrients or whatever, I feel like it's slower to like decay and stuff like that. So definitely depends on the environment and like the soil type and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Um, me personally, I'm a botany student, so I don't really care about <laughs> <animals>. <laughs> That's um, fair. That's but fair. I think soft tissues from back then can tell us a lot more about them and how their species were. Yeah. yeah. Do you think the soft tissues can last that long? I don't know. For me, I said, like, depends on <laughs> the environment. Like preserved, mm-hmm. yeah. Like, really well or something? Like, mummies yeah. and stuff like that, too. Like, the mummies, the, the way that's preserved, you, there's still, like, skin tissue and stuff like that. So it just depends on how they, like, were preserved or, like, yeah, with the soil, how rich in nutrients or whatever it is. Mm-hmm. Well, there's, um, if you'd be more interested in learning more, we have some more information about that than other things, because... We do a podcast because we believe in the biblical account from the Bible in Genesis where God created the earth like 6,000-ish years ago. And we do a podcast talking about some of the evidence that can support that. And like they, they can, that. So, you can go, so you can go at this stuff from a different angle. So if you guys would be interested, we've got some, we got some information we can give you. we got some QR codes you just take a picture of and then yeah. you go to the website if you ever want to. And I think that like science and religion does not have to be like mutually yeah. exclusive. Yeah, yeah exactly, exactly. Yeah, because that's 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 why we do it. Because we think that God created the world and science. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. that doesn't mean that science and you know the Bible don't have to be at odds with each other. A lot of times, from what we yeah, find, like, there 
proves the Bibles that that is right. Yeah. yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah, that was another good one. It was kind of funny their their reaction to hearing that there was one flat earther on a team flat. Yeah, so <laughs> that was pretty good. Um, thought it was cool how you know at least one of them was a Christian, and the comment that she had made that like science and God don't have to be mutually exclusive. Thought that I thought it was pretty cool. Still, kind of. You know, now that we're getting into more of these, you can kind of still see a pattern that, you know, most people just, they're taught this stuff growing up for dinosaurs being millions of years old, and they just, then they end up believing it, because we haven't had a person who has said, like, 4,000 yet for the age of the dinosaurs, so... We'll see. Yeah. We'll see if we get to one eventually. You never know. But uh, and one had mentioned that she was a Muslim, and you know our show can also reach you know other people who have other faiths. Uh, you know, like a, a person who's a Muslim. So much material we have at Real Science Radio and from the Dominic Inyart show to show that really Christ is the only way. It's mm-hmm. the only way to salvation. Mm-hmm. And you know, one way to start getting in a conversation is when you start talking about origins and people like to talk about dinosaurs and things like that. So, Ryan, this next one is really good because you, again, kind of put them possibly in an awkward position by asking if they're ring shopping. You know, we'll see if we get the same reaction or whether or not, you know, maybe there's a different reaction. And also just the, you know, their views on the same topic. Are we going to have another flat earther? Are we going to have a team round, as you say? (laughs) So let's roll the tape. Nice to meet you guys. So... The first question I want to ask is, do you think the Earth is round or flat? Round. I think it is round. Good answer. Good answer. I think that's nine to one for Team Round so far. Okay. So, <laughs> yeah. Um, so, second question I would ask is, um, how long ago do you think dinosaurs went extinct? Like, I don't know, a gazillion years? I don't know. <laughs> 5,000 B.C.? Uh, I'm not entirely sure. 5,000 B.C.? Okay, well, because um, the reason I ask is they've discovered some, like, soft tissue, so like muscle tissue and DNA in some unfossilized dinosaur bones. And, you know, that stuff is really fragile, so it can't last super long. So I was going to ask, would that change your mind on how, how old do you think they are? Like, how long ago do you think that happened? Like, I mean, think it would be less than a gazillion. <laughs> I mean... It- if it's a fact, well, then that's a different story. Like, I don't have nothing to go against the fact. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Like, my beliefs, they're, they don't exist at that point. Uh, I don't really know. I mean, there might be multiple factors, like, probably, like, the Ice Age or, like, preserving some, like, tissues that could have, like, made it fairly fresh. But I guess... I mean, that's an interesting re- discovery, though, so maybe maybe it was pretty recent. Mm-hmm. And, you know, 5,000 B.C. actually could be, you know, in theory possible. So that's not even that, you know, it's not that long ago, yeah. especially compared to, like, the, like, gazillions or the, the millions that, um, you know, that we hear a lot. And a lot of times these are, they're unfossilized, so they're not, like, really even preserved, like, in terms of, you know, like, with the fossilization process. Yeah. But they're, like just kind of still there in bones that they just kind of dig up from underground. So it's pretty interesting. Um, one other question, if you've got time, yeah. is are you guys are you guys looking for diamonds today? I already got one. Oh, nice. Congrats. Congrats. Thank you. Thank you. Good work, man. Good work. Um, is the reason I ask is, are you aware of what carbon-14 is? Do you know what that is? Is that the laboratory manufactured type of, like, diamonds? No, so that's just a, um, so it's, carbon-14 is just a, I guess, like, isotope that is in diamonds that, um, and are you aware of, like, what the half-life is of stuff like that? It, Not really. It basically is just in, after a certain number of years, half of it goes, like, half of it just decays into something else, so after 5,700 years, half of this carbon-14 stuff won't be there anymore. But inside diamonds like that really pretty one right there, there's actually a lot of carbon-14 in it, which in a sense sort of shows that it's not, a diamond like that wouldn't be that old either, because there's a lot of the stuff in there that decays at a relatively fast rate. So another interesting thing, so the reason we're asking these questions is we have a podcast and um, like, like video where we 
Because we believe in the Bible and Genesis and that account of the world's origins, which would be, and we take it like literally word for word. So we're about 6,000 years ago, God created the world in six 24-hour periods. And we do a podcast that talks about the, like the science that supports that. Because, you know, a lot of times when it's like religion, people think the religion and science are at odds with each other. So we do a, so we basically do a podcast where we talk about how science actually supports this stuff. Just a, diff a different angle to approach some of this like, that like, normally you don't hear about. Yeah, the correlation between science and religion. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like, we've been on the air 20 years. Yeah, they've been on the air 20 years. I haven't been on the air near that long. Shocking, I know. I, yeah. but, I mean, but, haven't they uh, found like research about like uh, the Noah's Ark or like the, the Garden of Eden like that was like washed up because of the, the elevation or the, uh, the water levels, but then like since it shrunk down, it's like revealing itself or something? They, they have found some stuff. I know they found some stuff with, like, with Noah's Ark, because that's another thing that we will talk about is like the global flood, and we'll talk about the evidence that we can see of that being a true historic event, as opposed to like a myth or something. But a lot of people have claimed to find Noah's Ark. You know, a lot of them have been also been proven to have lied about finding it. Yeah. But I've read some things recently that are kind of interesting. People think they might be on the trail. Odds are it you know, it isn't around anymore. But yeah, it's, it's, it's a lot of interesting stuff though with it. So Ryan, that was exciting. They actually are getting married and you know, she, they, they were ring shopping. So a little bit of a turn of events from the prior couple that uh, they weren't ring shopping. This one was, and I loved how you then brought in the whole carbon 14 and diamonds. And I thought you did a good job of just keeping it real short and explaining why it shows that those diamonds, the diamond that she just got isn't millions of years old. Yeah. That was so. kind of cool. But to be able to talk about a specific diamond that she had received pretty recently, that was pretty, that was pretty sweet. It's also cool how he started asking questions at the end, like asking about Noah's Ark and whatnot. Yeah. that was cool. Cause yeah. you know, it shows some curiosity and a willingness to learn more and, to figure out some figure out more stuff so it was great yep okay so on to the next clip so first question is do you think the earth is round or flat round <laughs> definitely round round okay <laughs> G good answer G good answer the the round scores are starting to starting to mount That's Our, a good thing. yeah yeah there is one though there, the, 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 there there is one on the other end if you if, if you believe it well i think technically it's more spherical but Round shape. Yeah, yeah, Round yeah. Shapes. So, also, so another thing we're gonna ask is, um, do you, how long ago do you think dinosaurs went extinct? <laughs> I believe it's around sixty-five million years. I'm and you gonna concur? Go with that. I will mm -hmm. go with that. <laughs> All right. Speaking of dinosaur gulch, there it is. <laughs> oh wow! Would you look at that? <laughs> They're still with us in many ways. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they are still with the, They are still with us in many, in many ways. They haven't left. Um, so I guess, what if, what if, what would you think if I was to tell you that they've, in some um, dinosaur bone deposits, they found soft tissue and DNA inside of unfossilized dinosaur bones? Would that make you not change your answer, but maybe reconsider um, the the sixty five million year length? Yeah, John. <laughs> I honestly don't know enough on the matter to say yes or no, but I would say probably no. Okay, okay. Do you have a reason why you'd say probably no, or just kind of intuition? Everything I've read says about that timeline, or I think millions and millions of years ago. 65, I believe, is when the mass extinction happened, but... Okay, because they, there, there have been some discoveries in the last 20 years that... Um, They've found like soft tissue and stuff and unfossilized bones. So things that would have a really hard time lasting that long. And um, I guess would it also, would it affect, would it affect that timeline if um, like, for example, in the Chinese calendar, they have pictures of dragons and stuff. And on, you know, they're a lot of like adult bed frames. These aren't like children. They've got, you know, dragons on their bed. So it'd be like, you know, me having you know, like Luke Skywalker on my, like, it's, you know, like, like adults. So like, you know, potentially creatures that they've seen or somebody at least long ago had seen. Is that something that you've ever heard of or would maybe affect 
I know not, multiple cultures around the world have incorporated dragons into their art and belief or whatever you have, whatever mm-hmm. have you. Mm-hmm. But I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I guess the question would be, where do you think they would have gotten that from if they didn't see them, if or their ancestors didn't potentially see them with their own eyes? Imagination, maybe. Yeah, I mean, imagination. Again, That's fair. Just, just, some food, just some food for thought yeah. is all. Yeah, so Ryan, this guy was pretty much, you know, he's a skeptic on what we're presenting, but, you know, hopefully we're planting a seed. Yeah, at the very least, at the very least, yeah, plant the seed, give him some information, even if, because uh, he was pretty... Hard line didn't seem like you know that willing to change his mind, but you never know. You never, yeah, know you never happened. know. And he said, you know, everything I've read, and that's what most of the people, probably I don't know, ninety to ninety five percent of people, that's their position is it's what they've read. They really haven't looked into it. I was that person for at least thirty years. I was the person who, oh, it's you know, my teachers taught me this. It's in the encyclopedias. It's everything I read. Mm-hmm. And everything mm-hmm. you read isn't necessarily true, and especially if you have a, a bias to it and a secular bias, and we know where, you know, the wisdom of the world comes from. So, Ryan, that was a, that was a, you know, really interesting clip, and we hope, hopefully, uh, if, if he gets a chance to reconsider this stuff down the road, he has at least been presented with this, this, and his. I assume his girlfriend, possibly fiance, wife, I don't know. But anyways. Mm-hmm. And it uh, was good experience, too, because, you know, not everybody's going to be not everybody's going to be super open minded that, you know, if any you know, of the audience ever talking to anybody trying to share this stuff, not everybody's going to be open minded. And a lot of times people are going to be pretty, you know, dug in. So it's good. Good experience to talk to somebody who, you know, isn't like isn't going to change their mind right away when you talk to them. Like, it's yeah. a different it's a lot different of a conversation when when it goes like that. So it's still, yeah, still good and worthwhile. It, yeah, and if you've never heard it before and it's the very first time you've heard it, you know, we can't always expect people to just say, oh, yeah, I'm going to immediately just change my mind. So yeah. You plant the seeds, you do do what you can. Okay, so the next uh, clip is another young couple that uh, this was an interesting one also. Mm-hmm. I'm Betsy. Betsy? Pierce. Pierce? I'm Ryan. Betsy. Nice to meet you guys. So, first question I'll ask, a little icebreaker question. Do you think the Earth is round or flat? Round. I think it's round. <laughs> All right. Good answer. Good answer. <laughs> so, um, the second question is, how closely, like, related, and I guess in terms of percentage, do you think that human and chimpanzee DNA is? Um... Well, what, do you want, like, a percentage? Like a percentage, like, like 90, 80... 70 uh, similarity maybe even it's like really not that 60? much 60 maybe 80 okay given that answer do you did you think that chimps are an ancestor of humans yeah sure yeah i think so sure could be mm-hmm. yeah. with this so say it was like 70 ish percent similarity do you think that's enough a similarity for for an ancestor you know given that I guess so. Do you think that's enough similarity for an ancestor? You think it'd have to be more? Um, probably more. Okay. Um, if, I think that's enough. You think that's enough? How much more do you think it would have to be? Um, I don't know. Maybe in the high 80s or 90s. Okay, because it is about 70 ish percent. I think 60 or 70 ish percent similarity in the Y chromosome, at least. Mm-hmm. Which the thing about the Y chromosome is it doesn't over time it's like really robust so it doesn't change it doesn't change that much mm-hmm. i guess yeah humans and sponges are about that same percent amount oh, really? between difference between the two and i don't I don't think humans and sponges are close ancestors mm-hmm. so True. um the reason we're asking these questions is we do we have a podcast where we talk about scientific evidence that supports the bible's timeline of like timeline of world history timeline of we believe that God created the world in six days and that and that it's about 6,000-ish years old. So we're, we do a podcast, we talk about the scientific evidence behind that because that's stuff that we don't hear about all that often. Like, um, like for example, when it comes to the, the chimpanzee DNA being 30% different, the scientist who discovered it called the discovery horrendous. Do you think that, <laughs> do, do you think horrendous is a scientific word? Uh- 
<laughs> no. Yeah, yeah. So for the guy who discovered it, it shocked him, and he thought it was way too big of a difference yeah. for for chimps and humans to be answered. So we talk about stuff like that, talk about the different findings. If you guys would be interested in... Um, oh, yeah, so I guess another question. If you guys have, you guys have a little yeah, more time? Okay. Yeah, you get a free, yeah, you get a mug out. Really, really high quality. Nice. So, um... I guess how long do you think dinosaurs went extinct? Like it's, it's between it's a couple million, a couple million years. Say five million years ago. Okay. Would it change your mind to hear that they've discovered some soft tissue and DNA in unfossilized dinosaur bones? No. Wouldn't be surprised. Wouldn't be surprised. I guess. I guess. Why wouldn't you be surprised? Uh, because I mean, stuff dies all the time. <laughs> you, you, yeah. Ditto. Yeah, like <laughs> so I guess um, when it comes to the like DNA in there, like, do you think it would be? It's not that out there for it to last that long, like, like two million years of uh, like not decomposing or anything like that. I don't think it's outlandish for it to be uh, for it to take that long, and for it to still be similar. Yeah. Same. All right, so Ryan, I thought that was really good that you started with the whole, you know, chimp-human similarity. You know, right out of the gate, they say, you know, 70%. That You know, their guesses are about, they're actually correct, but they think that that's still enough similarity to have a common ancestor. Yeah, that was interesting because it was something I wasn't particularly, I guess, prepared for. So it was good practice. Like, I figured that, I figured that if people for example, would say that they were, you know, chimps and humans are, have a common ancestor that they would say like 97%, but they actually say about what the real percentage is, but then think that that's enough to be common ancestors. So there was a good dynamic to have to then, as opposed to arguing that, hey, they're actually, if they think it's 97, but it's actually 60, argue that, argue why 30% difference is nowhere near enough to nowhere near enough to have a common ancestor, which yeah. um, there, there were a couple times I, you know, probably could have answered their questions a little bit better, but that's yeah. why it's a good learning experience because it was, I'll it, be more prepared next time I talk to somebody for that. Or Yeah. For, and again, it's a uh, telethon month. Uh, we're trying to raise 25,000. So if you want to see, you know, more of real science radio, we're going to do more man on the street interviews this year. Looking forward to that. But yeah, w I could, I would refer you back to the Sal Cordova shows and we'll provide a link uh, to those shows where he talks about the problem, the mathematical problem. 30% difference would be astronomical. There'd probably have to be the number of molecules in the universe would have to be the number of offspring each breeding couple would have to have for evolution to ha even have a chance. So even when it was 97% difference, the math didn't work. It was called Haldane's Dilemma. And by the way, we did provide each person that we talked to QR codes of different topics, and one of them was chimp man similarity. So we gave them the QR code that they could take a picture of and go go to our website and find out more about about that particular topic. So that was kind of cool. And most of them actually did, you know, take yeah, get the yeah. QR code. There was just an exception of a few that didn't that weren't interested in more information. Than the rest of them, whether they were just being nice or whether they actually had future interests, they all took it and they all, you know, will have it at least somewhere in their house, so even if they kind of forgot about it. Maybe they see it again in like a month or two and they're like, oh, well, let's, yeah. I got some time. Let's yep. check this out. So Ryan, hey, thanks again for being the interviewer on these uh, man on the street interviews. It, I thought it went really well. I'm oh, I did too. It was fun. It yeah. was it was good. You were a natural, man. <laughs> I wasn't quite the natural cameraman. I had a few others where I got my thumb in the camera, but you know, hey, it was the first time and we'll, we'll uh, perfect that. We'll get better at it. I'm looking forward to doing more of these. Mm -hmm. I think the next time we're going to try to do a college campus, so that'll be interesting. Maybe your former alma mater up at CSU or maybe it's CU campus or who knows where. Mm -hmm. So we've got more of those in store. So as a last reminder, this is Telethon Month. We're trying to raise $25,000, and it's going to help us build a media team to get out better content and just, you know, just improve the overall aspect of the both the Dominic Inyart show and Real Science Radio. And, you know, it's like C.S. Lewis. We believe the ministry of Bob Inyart will be magnified a thousandfold after his passing. So this $25,000 will help us not only to put out more of our own content, but also to help get the entire 
Inyart library out to thousands more, and there's so many could use it because we saw just we, what we saw from this man on the street. Pretty much every one of them could use this material. And like you said, there was only that one Native American uh, woman who you could tell just from the beginning already had a, a faith that God's word you know, means what it says. She'll even learn from this, but it's encouraging to see that, but we need to reach so many more of those. So, Ryan, thanks again, and uh, looking forward to doing another Man on the Street show in the future. Oh, yeah. Yeah, looking forward to the next one. So next week is Kurt Rushlow. You won't want to miss that. So... For Ryan Williams, I'm Fred Williams of Real Science Radio. May God bless you.